Welcome to the Word of the Lord, the weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church, proclaiming the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Mark Clements' in-depth, relevant biblical teachings will help you in life and living in today's world. Now, let's join Pastor Clements in the service already in progress. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, and and that, I, I don't believe that's a divine suggestion. So, so it seems when I, when I will preach something, minister something, share something, and give a couple references, it's quite common then that I'll receive a request, uh, either by a note or personally, uh, uh, or an email that just says, can you teach a little more on that? Can, 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 you, can you go back and, and rehearse that again for us? So over here in, in Hebrews chapter 12, what we, what we uh, just briefly touched on and dealt with was the biblical concept of rebuke or reproof uh, or correction. Uh, correction's a good thing. You may not have noticed it, but if you drove here, how many of you drove here? Some of you just rode, but but if you drove here, uh, how many of you drive for a living? I mean, I mean, we've got some over the road truckers and milk route and and a school bus and uh, y- whenever you drive, you're constantly correcting. You're constantly correcting, and and I've been in some smaller aircraft that I could sit right up, I could actually stand up, I could actually walk right up to the cockpit and watch, and they put it on autopilot. That means you don't have to do anything. My understanding was that when cruise control came out, we had to educate drivers that that was not autopilot. Because they would just put it on and think they didn't have to do anything. They didn't realize it was speed control, it wouldn't actually steer for you. Now we have cars that steer for you. Change lanes, slow down, speed up. I'm going to go back to riding a bike pretty quick here. <laughs> Feel like I can be in control of it instead of it telling me when I have to slow down and when I have to speed up. And I've been in some of your vehicles with you, a couple of you, and you're just tooling along, having a car. Oh, all of a sudden it takes off and goes faster because somebody got too close behind you. Cars do that now. Some of you are looking at me like I'm making it up. No, no, this is where you live, believe it or not. Correction is something that we, 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 we do. You may not even realize it, but you're walking along and you get a little bit overbalanced. You're, you, you correct that. You correct that just, just in walking. If you, if you study people, especially walking from behind, you'll see it. You know, just a little bit off and you, you have to make corrections in life. Some of you are, are wearing eyeglasses. I've got a pair of readers up here. They're called corrective lenses. That's what they're called. Contacts, glasses, they're, they're just, they, they, just, they just make a slight adjustment or a slight correction. Correction's a good thing. Yes, it is. Correction's a good thing. Correction gets me, I'm a little bit off, and it gets me back to being on right. That, that airplane starts to tip just a little bit one way or another, or starts to drop the nose or rise up, and, and the autopilot will, will correct it. You'll watch the yoke. Not only going left and right, you'll watch it coming in and out. And you'll watch it bringing correction to keep that plane flying level. The Bible's a whole lot that way. It's full of correction to just keep your plane flying level. Keep you on the right track and the right path so that your destination is, is exactly where you want it to be. And, and, uh, and, and I've, watched, I've watched children and young people, I, I was one, believe it or not, I can still remember back that far. And, and I, I've watched him in church now for 35 years as a leader and as a pastor, but, but I grew up in, in, in church, and so I grew up in, in Sunday school. I, grew, I went to school, went to school, Kindergarten, and then first grade, and then all the way through, and and uh, and then I've taught, uh, I've taught for 28 years, primarily 
children, not all, but primarily for the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Uh, and, and I notice people take correction differently. When you have to correct something or correct someone, and you have to tell them in that class, we teach them don't ever point a gun at anyone. That's what we teach them. And we tell them we know that you've got a super soaker squirt gun and you've got an airsoft gun and, and, and you know, you, you've, got, you've got paintball and, and, and you're forever trying to shoot people, but that's not what this is. This is, this is a real firearm. And so we teach them not to swing the muzzle. That's the part where the bullet comes out of the shock. And so we teach them don't ever point that like this. Always keep that in a safe direction. And I've noticed for 28 years it's never any different that if, if, if a young person picks it up and starts to swing it and, and you stop them, they'll pull that right up, get it in a safe direction. They'll smile and say, thank you, Mr. Clements. And the next one, you'll say, well, watch the muzzle of that gun, and they'll just throw it down on the table and, and storm away. Now, I don't just watch that with children in hunter education. Come on. Come on. I, I watch that in elementary school, middle school, high school. I've watched it in ministry. I watch ministers sit at a leadership meeting, and the person in the pulpit bring correction to ministers, and, and they don't throw it down and storm away, but they'll just shut their Bible. And they'll, 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 get, they'll get all irked about it. They'll, they'll get all tense about it. They'll, they'll, they'll get all, excuse me for the phrase, but ticked off because somebody's messing with them. And all they're trying to do is just bring their plane back on right. All they're trying to do and with correction. Correction comes from God. Correction comes from God. Now, I know because of people's personality, sometimes it's different. You can raise two children in the same household, and they go to the same school and same church, have the same mom, have the same dad, uh, have the same family devotions, have the same set of morals, and, and they can take correction differently. Uh, I understand that, that there's personality. Some people are just devastated by correction because they have such a perfectionist attitude. And you tell them they're doing something wrong, it, it, just, it just totally decimates their life. Uh, I hope I'm helping you now because sometimes the Lord tries to do that. And instead of just taking it and smiling for its intended purpose, its intended purpose is to get me back into right. I'm getting a little too far over in the lane. And, and, and you ever do that? Your tire drops off and gravel's kicking up all over and dust. And you feel so dumb. All the people behind you know you weren't paying attention, you know. <laughs> And even if you are, sometimes the car just, just pulls that way. Then you make a huge mistake. The one thing I took away from driver's education was just stabilize. You're okay there. You're not going anywhere. Just stabilize your speed and leave it there. Wait till all your oncoming traffic is clear. And then pull, up, pull back up on. And forever we're hearing about these people drop it off and then jerk it back up on there and over on the other side and in the ditch and through the median. and things. Just, just if your life gets that way, what my recommendation would be when you, you first... You ever get on those rumble strips? And, and what is that for? That's your pastor saying, you're about to go in the ditch. That's what that is. That's the rumble strip. That's the man of God saying, hold it, wait, careful here. You're, you're getting a little too far out of the lane. And, 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 and don't just keep going. Don't get mad about him messing with you and just say, well, fine then, and just keep right off going right off in the ditch. You know, that's the, that's the warning sound to get you to get back into the right spot, the right lane. Thank God we live in America. We drive on the right side. And sometimes they have them in the middle on the yellow lines. It's the same thing. You get a little too far over, and that's to help alert you. Really, they were first developed to help people who were falling asleep behind the wheel, it would wake, it'd wake you up. So look at your neighbor right now and say, I hope you're awake. We don't want you hitting anybody head on. We don't want you going off in the ditch and rolling your vehicle. So, 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 so there's various means in life to help us correct, but the mechanisms and the apparatus as, as it would be, in some of your cars you have warning bells that go off when you get a little bit out of your lane. 
Uh, but, but those rumble strips on the right and on the left, they're just to help you stay in the right lane. Stay in the right lane, and, and when you get over this way, you have to do something that's called correct. And, and, and the, best, the best correction comes from your own self, your own heart. Let your own heart correct you. Let your own heart. You know better than that. You, you say to yourself, I know better than that. But you can't take correction from yourself sometimes any better than you can someone else. And so as soon as you see you've done wrong, realize you've done wrong, you're reading your Bible some morning and you go, oh, and instead of saying, okay, that's going to help me get right back on right, make the adjustment and drive straight ahead. Instead of that, shut the Bible and say, oh, I'm never going to make it. I'm worthless. I'm just ready. And, and no, I'm, that's not the design of correction. The design of correction is not to make you feel bad. It's to bring you back and right, back to the right spot. And so it says this in Hebrews 12. That's some pretty good preaching right there for, for not even reading a verse yet. Hebrews chapter 12, and, and, and we, just, we already shared verses 2 and 3 about look, look at Jesus and watch Jesus and keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Now, we can't see him. He's not here. He's not, he's not multiplying bread and fish and walking on water that we can see. We see him through this word. We focus on him through this word. It says he's at the right hand of God. It says he overcame sinners. It says he endured affliction. And, and, and we, should, we should consider him, lest we become weary and faint in our mind. Verse 3, you've not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and, and, and you have forgotten. Isn't that something? That the apostle can actually write to a church and tell them, you've forgotten. You have forgotten the exhortation that speaks to you as, as unto children. You are a child of God. I said, you are a child of God. Amen. Galatians 3.26 says, by faith in Jesus Christ, you become a child of God. John chapter 1 and verse 12, if you've received him, accepted him, he gives you the power, the privilege, the authority to become a child of God. And, and, and you've forgotten the exhortation that speaks to you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, and don't faint when you're rebuked of him. What does that mean? That means, oh. Yeah, don't faint. I won't ask for a raise of hands. How many teenagers do we have in here? How many chil Have the ch children been dismissed yet? Did they already left? We should have them in here, shouldn't we? But you can teach them that. You're their parents. That's your responsibility. Yeah, yeah, don't faint when you're correct. What does that mean, Pastor? That means don't have a meltdown. You understand a meltdown? Yeah, don't have a meltdown because, because you, were, you, were create, you were creative. And, 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 you know, sometimes people just seem so shocked that, oh, I'm doing something wrong. You know, you're the only one that's shocked. <laughs> you know, that you're not perfect. Everyone else has had that figured out for a long time. Nobody's perfect. Perfection will not be reached in this lifetime. Perfection will not. You're, you're perfect spiritually, in your spirit. The spirits of just men made perfect. Yeah, on the inside, on the outside, we're still working out our salvation. It starts on the inside. We're working it to the outside. We're getting it through our mind, our soul, and then we're getting it even out to our flesh. Even your flesh can discern right from wrong. So that's working out your salvation. But over there, a little farther into the, into the chapter, verse 23, it's talking about heaven, the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Spirits are the only part of them that are in heaven, and they're perfect. They're perfected, already perfected. But on the outside, we're still, we're still working it out. So it says there, don't despise, number one, don't despise the chastening of the Lord. Don't despise that. Don't despise correction or discipline or chastening or reproof or rebuke. See, there's a difference in those. Second Timothy, speaking to this young pastor, he says to him, he says in, in chapter 4, verse 2, that's Second Timothy 4, verse 2, he says, preach the word, be instant. That means ready at all times, stay at your post. Preach the word, be instant, in season and out, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. Part of doctrine, part of teaching the Word will do all three of those. Now, 
Now, uh, I'm not going to ask for raising up of hands here either, but how many of us love to be exhorted, love to be cheered, love to be urged on, love, love to, to, to be complimented and told who we are and, 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 and that we're doing a, a, a wonderful job and, 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 and really just spur us on? How many of us love that? And how many of us love reproof? That's pointing out things that are out of order and wrong and need to be adjusted. And then how many of us love rebuke? That's not pointing out things that need to be adjusted. That's pointing right to me and saying, you're wrong and you need to get this straight. It started off really good there when I was talking about exhortation, but, but the, the farther back we went, but as I read my Bible, exhortation comes after reproof and after rebuke. And so after reproof and rebuke, I put my arm around uh, one of my children and I say, you're going to make it. It's okay. You're not going to hell over this. Nobody's going to prison over this. You know, okay, made a mistake. Pick it up, brush it off, get back in, go for it again. Verse 6, you asked for it. I, I, you asked for more teaching on this, so I hope it's okay. We're not going to take the whole morning on it. Some of you can smile. We are going to talk about other things. <laughs> Look, my son, do, don't despise the chastening of the Lord. Don't faint when you're rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Loveth is present tense. Whom the Lord loves. Not loved or not someday will love, but the current, present day evidence of the Lord's love is not dying on a cross. That's the past tense evidence that he loved us. The present day evidence that Jesus loves me is that he doesn't leave me the way I am. See, He doesn't leave me contentious. He doesn't leave me cantankerous. He doesn't leave me in fear. He doesn't leave me worrying in unbelief. He doesn't leave me ignorant and in, in darkness and misunderstanding. He doesn't leave me the way I am. He, so he brings correction in any of those things. And don't faint when you're rebuked. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. And then you can go ahead and, and, and read the rest of that, but I'm just going to skip down to verse 11. And it says, now no chastening for the present time seems joyous. It's like, whoo, I haven't got a whipping for, for 48 hours. <laughs> wow, this is really great. For the present, right, right at present, I mean, it seems joyous that, that, that I, haven't, I haven't had any chastening, any discipline, any reproof, any rebuke. Man, I sat through a whole service with Pastor Clements, and I wasn't chastised one time. Man, this was a great day. Not biblically, because I might just be left to my own devices. I might be left in my own condition. I might be left thinking something's okay that's not okay. Amen. I might be thinking it's okay to carry an attitude to Sunday morning service. Uh, I might think it's okay to be contentious where I sit with what's being said. I might think it's okay to go to church and say, I wish he'd preach on something else instead of always talking about it. I might think that's okay. I don't realize how... how not okay, and how far away from God's heart and God's will, and how far away from acceptable that really is. If, if, I, if I just sit and that never gets dealt with. Can I have my verse back? Thank you. No chastening at the present time. That seems joyous. Whoo, I didn't get a whipping today. I wasn't one of them, but I'm sure I went to middle school at least, maybe high school, with some people that uh, if they didn't get a whipping every day, it, it, uh, that had to be an oddity. Because I know they deserved it. And they came to school. I, I mean, it, it wouldn't have surprised me at all if they had just walked in and said, whoo didn't get a whipping today. You know, for the present, that seems joyous, but actually it's grievous. No chastening at the present seems joyous, but really it's grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness in them that are exercised thereby. 
I remember I've had to just maybe twice in 35 years put my hand around a, a, a parent's shoulder and say, you need to go exercise your children. And I don't mean make them do sit-ups. <laughs> See, that's Bible vernacular for the paddle. That's Bible vernacular for the timeout chair. That's Bible vernacular for take that cell phone away for a month. That's Bible vernacular uh, for, for whatever that discipline may be. But no ch chastening. at the uh, Right now, if I'm not being rebuked, uh, man, I think that's just wonderful. But in reality, it just leaves me the way I am. In reality, it's grievous. That discipline, that chastening, that, that, that uh, 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 reproof or rebuke, once it's done, yields the peaceable fruit of, help me preach, of what? That means it gets me back into right. Gets me off of the shoulder and back into the lane. Gets me off the yellow line and back into my lane. If the wings are dipping to the right, it brings me back to level. And, and, and that's what discipline does. It brings me back to right. I wouldn't need discipline if I, was, if I wasn't wrong. And depending on the level of that wrong and my attitude about it, should I say that again? Yeah. Depending on the level of my wrong and my attitude about it, it may take on a different form in its harshness or in its severity. See, we ought to learn a great parenting lesson here. There's a difference between reproof and rebuke. There's a difference in between scourging and, and, and correcting. A correction is just a verbal, a verbal don't do that again. A scourging is a whipping, as we would say. And we don't we don't spare the rod. If we love our children, that's what the Bible says. It's, it's an expression, again, it's an expression of love. An expression of love. And so <clears throat> the Lord's not going to treat, treat every issue identically the same. Sometimes it's just going to be just a, just a, a mild, uh, a, a, a mild, just a, just a, just, there goes a verse. And then go, oh, uh, that, that was for me. I, I, I take that uh, and adjust it. At other times, it's quite direct. And it's an out-and-out, downright rebuke. Okay, so uh, I hope that's okay. I hope I get another note now that says, thanks for teaching on it again. Really cleared some things up. Yeah. Revelation chapter 3, the last of the churches. The last of the churches. Now, I'm going to teach on this one of these days. And, and I'm probably going to upset somebody's apple cart. Because you probably have a picture somewhere in your house of Jesus. And he's standing at the door. Knocking. What's he doing? Knocking. I got a question for you. What door is he standing at? You won't even have to write me a note. I'm going to teach you on this someday. What door is he standing at? You always thought he was standing on the outside of the house because that's what the picture shows. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you stand at the door. Your house got a lot of doors. Don't get all quiet on me now. He just said he stands at the door and knocks. We'll, we'll teach you on it someday. I'm not going to teach you on it today. That's verse 20. Verse 19 says, verse 19 says, as many as I, help me, as many as I am mad at, hate, am angry with, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. The present day ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ is bringing correction, chastening, reproving, rebuking, disciplining to bring us to right. As many as I love. If we'd have kept reading there in Hebrews chapter 12, what you'd have heard was the evidence of a parent that doesn't love you is no discipline. That's the evidence of a parent that doesn't love me. So when, when, if you ever have the, the experience of some of you younger parents of discipline in one of your children, you don't love me. Yes, I do. That's why, that's why I'm... That's why I'm disciplining you right now. This is evidence of love. It's not evidence of hate. I'm not mad. 
If I am, I need to go sit in a timeout chair for five minutes and get over that madness and then come back and, and, and do, do my job and, and be responsible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 1. Uh, I stand up here at the front of, of, of the sanctuary after every service. Do that on purpose. Paul and I, we've decided a long time ago that uh, there's only two of us, and so we can only be in two places. I wish there were two of us and we could be in six places. Matter of fact, I wish there were two of us and we could be in 16 places. I'd be in 15 of them, wouldn't I? Uh, but we can't. We can only be in two. So she goes to the back door, greet you. I hope you greet her. Even if she's conversing with somebody else, she, she comes back there to hug your neck, shake your hand, tell you that we love you. And, uh, and, and, and I stay up here. And, and all the kids come up. Hold up my candy. See, I might get parents coming up here pretty quick. Hold it way up in the air. See that? I go through that thing like, like uh, every other week. It's full of chocolate kisses. You give pastor a verse and a hug, you get a kiss. Not you, you have to be 12 or under. See, they, so they come up and they give me Bible verses. And, and two weeks ago, one of these young boys came up and he read, do you have an NIV? Do you have the NIV on our program? Because he read this... It, it, did somebody have an NIV Bible? You don't have to be embarrassed. I'm going to use it. <laughs> somebody got a phone? You, you got an NIV? Bring it up here. Bring it up here. Look up Proverbs 12, verse 1. We've got one. We've got one. You got it? Proverbs 12 and verse 1. All right. You're going to read it. I wouldn't dare read it. I yeah. Stand close. Read loud. Listen. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. <laughs> One of our boys brought that verse up to me for his chocolate kiss. I said, read that again. My Bible don't say that, but I like it. Read that again. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. Thank you. Now, we have a King James Bible, right? We have a, yeah, and, and in the King James, it says, Whoever loves instruction loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. I didn't even know what brutish meant. Now I do. <laughs> and, and, then, and then again, uh, Proverbs 9 and verse 8, uh, and then we're finished up there. Proverbs 9 and verse 8 says that, uh, Reprove not a scorner lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he'll love you. And he'll love you. Hating correction, getting all sullen and pouty and angry about it, and, 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 and thinking, well, you don't love me. Uh, that couldn't be farther from the truth. The Lord said, if I, if I don't bring discipline, the Lord said, that's demonstrable evidence that I don't love you. If I don't, if I, I'll just, I'll just, he, he would just let me, let me go. Let me be anything and do anything and, and crash my life, shipwreck my life. Uh, but, but it's not that way. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. All right. Thank you for watching The Word of the Lord, the weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church. Living Word Christian Church welcomes you to join us at 2015 Ward Avenue in La Crosse, Wisconsin, Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30, and Wednesday evenings at 7. For more information on Living Word Christian Church, visit us on the web at lwcclax.com.